The University of Tennessee Medical Center is our region's only academic medical center. Our mission is to serve through healing, education, and discovery. Our goal is to share the knowledge of our physicians and staff in these health education videos as you make healthcare decisions for yourself and your family. A hernia is a hole in the strength layer, which is most commonly on the abdominal wall. Um, hernias can exist in a lot of different places. They can be next to the belly button, called an umbilical hernia. They can be down in the groin, called an inguinal hernia. And they can be either a primary hernia that develops because things don't heal and grow right, or they can be from a previous surgical uh, intervention, such as an incisional hernia. Uh, hernias can exist in a lot of other places, including the diaphragm going up into the chest, uh, and internal hernias, meaning that a hole gets created because of something that was reconstructed. Uh, but again, the most common place that we see this is on the belly wall as, a, as an abdominal hernia. Well, a hernia most commonly presents as a bulge, and unfortunately there are a lot of other things that can cause bulges. Obesity can cause a bulge, a laxity in the muscle called a diastasis where a stretch occurs can mimic a hernia. But a hernia being a hole usually allows the things that should remain on the inside, for example in the belly, the intestines, uh, to bulge through and thus create this large ballooning effect, particularly when the person bears down or strains their belly wall muscles. Um, other things that can uh, be signs of a hernia include pain uh, in the groin region or around the belly button, um, but the combination of pain and a bulge is usually relatively diagnostic. So a hernia was originally repaired by making an open cut through the area where the hole in the fascia is and sewing the two edges of the strength layer back together. Um, over the years, we have discovered that if you just do that as a primary repair, the risk for recurrence or the hernia coming back is increased. So we've evolved our techniques now to include things such as placement of a piece of mesh that can either be a biologic or a synthetic, a piece of plastic, to reinforce our closure to help decrease the risk for recurrence. We've also come up with other things such as a minimally invasive approach using laparoscopy to place the mesh for reinforcement. And this can be applied to both the umbilical, the belly button hernia, or to inguinal hernias down in the groin. Um, the sort of more complicated the hernia, the more involved the repair is going to be. So patients with a very large hernia where half of their intestines, for example, could be on the outside of their belly wall, can require more complex treatments such as an abdominal wall reconstruction, which basically involves taking apart the muscle layers of the belly to be able to put them back together in a different orientation to fix that hole. I hesitate to say that there is a single operative procedure that is not complicated. Um, in general, repairs of hernias are a safe operative procedure. Um, they are something that is worth doing. The risk of maintaining a hernia and watching it is that the bowels might get trapped and thus twisted or kinked, cutting off the blood supply or causing a blockage of those intestines. So the risk for an infection is low, the risk for a recurrence is low, and hernia operations in general are very safe. Finding someone who's comfortable with repairing the type of hernia that you have is an important thing because not all hernias are the same. And some, definitely such as these abdominal wall reconstructions, those types of repairs require somebody who's done special training and is comfortable with those techniques. We hope you'll join us soon for another medical moment. Visit utmedicalcenter.org or call the Healthcare Coordination Office at 865-305-6970 to learn about services available at the University of Tennessee Medical Center.